Hello, it's me again, and I'm actually revisiting the Pyramid series with this Jing's Pyraminx. I was a little neglectful in not doing this one, because it's really the same strategy as the Pyraminx. First, I wasn't sure, is this a skew? Is this a pyramid? Um, I'm going to classify it more as a pyramid. It moves like a skew. The internal mechanism probably is very similar. The pieces look like what we saw with the skew. But honestly, the strategy is much more like a pyraminx. So we're going to go through how to how to how to do that. Uh, just like a pyraminx, we have uh, the uh, caps here, um, which basically will be lined up at first. They don't move independently, though you have to kind of move them with the side. Speaking of which, they do have sides. You've got centers like um, the master pyraminx on up, and then of course you've got edges. So let's see what happens and scramble it. Hocus Cadabra. Okay, there we go. So what I wanted to do is, before trying to figure out algorithms and things like that, is I wanted to see if I can solve it exactly like a pyraminx. So that's what we'll try to do, see what happens. So the first step was we put all of our caps in alignment. The caps don't move independently, we just have to move the entire um, side here in order to make that happen. So starting with the green, here's a green here, green here, and green here. So I'm just going to coordinate this down like this. So these are all in place. Um, orange and orange, move this orange in. So very easily, very quickly, without any mess, we're able to get these in place. Now as you recall, my next step is to put these edges in and then deal with the centers last. So we'll start off with the orange and blue. I was, whoop, you know what? I always do the red one on the bottom, so why don't we do this? We'll start off with the green and orange. So where's the green and orange? It's right over here. So this needs to be moved like this. But I don't want to screw up my centers. So the the, the algorithm, the um, strategy is to move it in, move it out in another plane, and then reverse it, as you recall. So it really doesn't matter how we do it, but we go across, up, back, down. So there it is here, and we maintain that. So that's, as you recall, I refer you to the master pyraminx on up for that exact strategy, but it's that kind of crisscross strategy where we move it in, take it out from the same plane, and then move it back. So next we have um, yellow and blue. Well, we got the yellow and blue here. It's just, it's just flip-flopped. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take it out by any means necessary so I can put it in properly. So I'm gonna go down, across, up, back. The reason for doing that is not to screw up my, my areas here, and now we can try to put this in appropriately. So we're going to have to do some deconstruction in order to do that, namely move this down here. Okay, so upon moving this down here, now I can move this up in this plane and across in this plane. So up, across, down, back, and then we have to reconstruct it from before. So there it is. This is in place, this edge is in place. Now we want the blue and green. Once again, this is um, skewed here. So I'm just gonna move this up so that I can deal with that. Down, across, up, back, and move my centers back. Now that I've done that, blue and green is now here. I'm just gonna move this across here so that I can move it in place like this. Whoop, almost did it again, didn't I? I'm gonna to have to move it like this. Now, the problem is, of course, I can't move it out from these planes here. I can't draw upon these guys because I'll, I'll screw it up. So I'm gonna draw upon the bottom here. So as you recall, my strategy with the previous pyraminx is move this up so that I can use that. And now, yeah, move this up. So now I'm free to go up, across, down, back, and immediately move this down. What makes it a little confusing is that when I do all the moving around, it seems, it seems to move things out of place. There goes my phone. So this is in place, this is in place, this is in place. These centers happen to be in, but that's not really what I'm focusing on now. Now we gotta do the bottom. So that means uh, just a little bit of fancy footwork. We'll try the green and red first. Where is that? Right over here. So I'm going to move this up so that I can move it in place. But what am I going to exchange it with? Well, I can exchange it with this. So down, up, up, down. And then move this down. 
and lo and behold, it worked. All of these guys are in. Now, it's usually that simple. Sometimes you have to do um, the strategies that I've shown before where you put one in, but you have two that are out. Um, so uh, for that, you just have to uh, put another one out and just keep exchanging. Now you've got these centers. Now I'll refer you back to the master permings algorithm, but anytime you want to move centers around, you're going to do the R move and the U move with the algorithm R, U, R, I, U, I three times. Now in here, my suspicion is these are gonna move exactly like the master pyraminx, where that algorithm is gonna flip-flop these two and flip-flop these two. So three tries of that algorithm should be able to fix it. So one, 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 two, 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 three, 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 three. aha! And using a little more than pyraminx strategy, this rather entertaining Jing's pyraminx can be put together. So there you have it. Let me know if there's any questions or if you want me to elucidate other scenarios, but it's really the same, exactly the same strategies as the, as the others. Hope it helped.